Who's up first? Um, sure, yeah. Uh, well, recently, I, I would like to ask about the state's attorney's race. Mm -hmm. um, recently, we've had say that again. The state's attorney's race. Okay. Um, recently, we've had uh, first uh, Miss Mosby got mm -hmm. into the race, and now Mr. Navarden has gotten into the race. And wanted to see um, if you're backing anyone, who or if you're lending your support to any of the candidates, and, and where you stand, yeah, luckily, I'm, I have the uh, pleasure of not having to get involved in this race. I mean, I'm, not, I'm not running, and I have work to do. You know, the, the work I have to do is focus on being a partner uh, with the current state's attorney. We're doing a lot of work. You know, we just announced the partnership with the federal prosecutors. You know, I'm, I am focused on uh, getting the work done. And I, I think there's enough, there will be enough opinion about the candidates that, you know, I, I certainly won't need to chime in. So you're going to stay neutral on the race, or are you going to endorse Mr. Bernstein? Like I said, I'm, I'm focused on getting the work done. Um, we're, we, we've been analyzing some of the data in this race, mm -hmm. and uh, in Mr. Bernstein's record, and one of the things that we have learned is that um, convictions and indictments have gone down since he took office, but that sentence lengths are up. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, how did you rate his performances as a prosecutor? Uh, he's been a, a good partner, and I think it's, you know, that type of, um, you know, research and comparisons and judgment calls, I think, are for the voters. I'm just glad you have an interest. I thought you just rigged me over the coals. I'm glad that <laughs> you're looking into somebody else's yes. record. <laughs> well, try to, We're equal opportunity. <laughs> You know, one article does not make you equal opportunity. <laughs> but let us see. I am assigned to City Hall, so it's not. It's right across the street. Like yeah. you could throw a rock and hit there. Yeah, yeah. Well, our, our court reporter is taking the lead on this story, but uh, I want yeah. to ask you for your thoughts. I appreciate it. Um, I wanted to ask about Eco ATM or mm -hmm. you know machines like this. Do you have a position on City Council's um, you know upcoming vote? potentially to ban them from the city and what problems that creates for people crossing across to the county lines where they're legal? I don't, as far as problems that they create, I mean, I think it's an industry that will exist, uh, you know, with or without the the ban, uh, you know, that it, it exists online, um, you know, which our, our uh, legislation doesn't impact, so. You know, my concern is that we're doing everything that we can in that industry to put safeguards. I mean, a lot of the phones are only, uh, you know, viable as these, as um, or they're only a commodity because the technology hasn't caught up uh, with the, the uh, you know, the petty thieves of today. And there is technology available that would make, you know, stealing a phone useless. Uh, because they would be able to track it, and even if you stole someone's phone, you wouldn't be able to do anything with it. You know, to me, that's the that is the the uh, reasonable and complete full um, you know full solution to that. So, do you uh, would would you like to see City Council come up with a compromise that like the one that Councilman Bill Henry was working on? that would, you know, work with the police department, come up with some standards? Yeah, I think it was a little odd, and I don't know the backstory with his amendment. Usually there's, uh, you know, at least a debate about it. You know, I, I, my understanding is it didn't even get a second, so there wasn't even an opportunity to, to have uh, a debate about it. But I don't know enough about the backstory, and maybe they've talked about, you know, the council members have talked about it before. Um, you know, I haven't been engaged in any of that conversation. Again, you know, at our level, at, you know, when I, when I talk to other mayors at the, the, the conference and things like that, we're talking about the increase in technology that would help us nationwide make this, uh, this um, you know, this, basically it's, a, it's driving our, our robbery numbers, these theft of cell phones. Yeah. So as a last follow-up, would you like to see, I mean, is this an Annapolis issue maybe? You said nationwide, but I think it's, I mean, I think all of us at all levels of government need to be involved in pushing for uh, better technology. You know, 
if the, um, if the cell phone companies can be partners in reducing crime with simple technology, they should. And they need to hear from all of us. Okay. Um, Mayor, the, uh, the liquor board responded yesterday mm -hmm. to the uh, state audit, which showed a lot of dysfunction, you know, the, uh, only a minuscule amount of inspections mm -hmm. and, and what they're supposed to be doing and holding bars and taverns accountable. Uh, obviously, this is a state agency. You guys, they're not accountable to you, but you do fund it. And um, what can be done to improve the liquor board and what kinds of problems is it causing for average citizens when they, there is no recourse for problem bars? I mean, if, you're, if you are from Baltimore, you know, and you know the, the historic problems we've had with the liquor board, I was pleased that there was an audit that was done that people are paying attention. It's frustrating for me and has been as a city elected official knowing that the, 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 the liquor board's principal positions are uh, patronage positions controlled by the state senators and uh, historically have had little, um, you know, have, have answered very little to the city council, yet when people call because of a problem with the liquor store, they don't hold the, the senators or even the, the state responsible. They're looking for us to fix it. So it, we've, we have been, I have been frustrated personally. The council members have been frustrated. We've been pushing and pushing uh, for changes. And my focus is on getting this, uh, you know, the, the audit findings remedy. And I'm glad that there's a light that's shining on uh, the problems that I've been you know, talking about with our state partners uh, for far too long. Uh, Madam Mayor, what's, um, what are your thoughts about some of the leaders within the Bureau of Water and Wastewater and their expenses on travel? Or do you feel like those expenses have been a good use of taxpayer funds? Which ones in particular? Um, well, last week, the ones approved by the board with Mr. Cho, the ones he was questioned on. Um, yeah, we just interviewed uh, Colonel Fox about some of the travel he's been doing. So Yeah, I think we need to legit there is legitimacy in making sure that the travel expenses that we have are uh, an effective and efficient use of taxpayer dollars uh, that being said uh, you know all of the answers to baltimore's issues won't be found within our borders and if we shut ourselves off from uh, finding out what best practices are, uh, engaging with other jurisdictions that are having similar problems, engaging with uh, the, the industry officials, we are not going to ensure that we're doing the best that we can for uh, our constituents. In a perfect world, every conference would happen in Baltimore. In a perfect world, every time there was a conversation about water uh, infrastructure and uh, sewer, you know, people would say, "I can't have a conversation until I come to Baltimore." But that doesn't happen, you know. So if you're going to be, if if you're going to be in the industry, and you are going to um, seek excellence, you have to, you know, you 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 have to get out there, and uh, you know, get in the mix a little, and and then bring that information and and use it for our constituents. Um, we try to make sure that. Um, it's not excessive, that it's, um, it's uh, strategic use of uh, time and taxpayer dollars. Okay. I have time for one more. I just want to follow up on the Grand Prix, which mm -hmm. is obviously just kind of hanging out there. Um, is it really? Well, I don't know. Is it? I, you know, I, I think that we've asked you know, a number of times about mm -hmm. this, but I mean, I was in town that weekend, and if you weren't around the track, it was DEAD. Mm -hmm. I mean, nobody was here. Um, you could go into any restaurant at any time and no problem getting a table. Where if you look at, like, for Saturday night now, if you went to open table and look for anywhere from 7 to 9 o'clock, you'd have a tough time getting a table. That's a typical Saturday. Mm -hmm. um, so as you're going forward, I mean, do you take into account, I mean, what about that? What about the impact that the race seems to have after, I guess this is the third year, mm -hmm. Uh, on the rest of the business community? Yeah, I certainly take that into account. <laughs> do you, I know you're talking about changing the date. Um, how, let, let me ask you this way. How do you solve that problem? I, there, there are a million ways uh, to solve it, you know, certainly being in partnership. You know, but let me back up by saying you know, Baltimore's tourism industry is one of the top five industries in the city. And just as we look for ways to enhance uh, 
the viability of our meds and our eds, our tech community. Uh, I will consistently uh, look for innovative ways to support our tourism industry. It has nothing to do with race cars. It has everything to do with the jobs that are created and supported by our tourism industry, which is strong. Uh, relative to many other uh, cities around the country and remain strong during the recession. And when we can show the world, the, the country and the world, that we can handle and we can put on big events, we are opening up the door to more opportunities. We had people here from, uh, we had federal government uh, representatives, we had people from other countries, other, other states, looking at our unified command and the way in which we seamlessly uh, operate these big events events. And they're looking at it because they consider Baltimore best practices. And when that happens, people in the world of tourism, when they're looking for a venue, they're saying Baltimore is in the game. Baltimore is an option. So uh, for me, yes, I take into uh, to account the serious concerns of uh, the restaurants uh, and everybody that's impacted. Um, but what if the, the, the next big event that, that we get, you know, that someone has, uh, their, their interest is piqued by Baltimore because of what they've seen us be able to do, fills up all the restaurants. You know, we have to continue to look for ways to, to spark interest in our tourism industry if we want to continue to be strong. And for me, that's the, you know, while, yes, we're, we focus and we're uh, I'm receptive and, and I hear, uh, the, the concerns of the local business about this particular event. I'm also uh, balancing that on the big picture as well. Can I just ask one follow-up question mm -hmm. related to what you talked about with the economy? Mm -hmm. you, has the city been at all involved in who the million square foot tenant is going to be on the old GM site? I have no idea what you're talking about. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> really, has the city been involved? Has the city been involved in luring a business to that site? I have no idea what you're talking about. Mum is the word. When might we know? You will know as soon as we know, and I'm 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 certainly not going to do anything to um, to derail what's possible. That's a big deal. Okay. As as Biden would say, I would. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.